Okay, that should do it. Ooh, okay. Yep. And let me go here. Yeah, I just wanted to double check. All right. And pull it up here. Come on, baby. Twelve twenty one in New York City. So one, two, two, one. Nice number. I know. That's what yeah. I was in. Six three twenty nineteen. Yeah. No, you're six four over there already, aren't you? You're July fourth. June fourth. No, I'm June uh, I'm June third. Today's the new moon. Oh, you're June third over there. Oh, it's right. It's twelve twenty two. Yeah, I mean, hours yeah. ahead of uh, New York's time. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Sarah Williams, Jenny Smith, Laws Mitchell, Heather Nielsen, Gaia Man, Eon Boldy from Romania, Aaron wow. Lee. Oh, thank you for joining us. We yeah. really on it, and we appreciate it. Sean Warren from South Africa, my dear friend, Michelle Weisenberger, Jed Riverstone, Mary Kathleen McCormick, Tim Deutsch, who we just met through Patrick McCormick. That was a very interesting show. Let me share through the network and we'll get started. Sorry for the late start. We are being blessed not to have too many technical difficulties as of late, and this one passed fairly quickly, so that's okay. All right. Okay, so we're good here. We got 19 people in the house. Romeo Barron's here. I believe he's going to be here next weekend. John Hood, Ben Hausman. All right. So let me just remind everybody a couple of announcements real quick. And we'll get started with our beloved brother, man. Who was we had a great show last time. Um, we're gonna have this Saturday, which is the 8th of June. We're gonna take Soldier One Studios down to the streets of Kabaha. We're going to go into the Mandira uh, Spiritual Center where we got a DJ set up and a dance floor. We're going to have a local event. We're going to broadcast it. We're going to stream it on YouTube and Facebook. We're going to do the old radio show that I used to do. So I'm going to do a few spiritual rap numbers, do some commentary freestyle. We're going to play some videos of our friends around the world with their own artistic expressions uh, and videography. And uh, we're going to have a blast. So we're going to do that from six to eight. Uh, Hawaii time, which is midnight New York time, 9 p.m. Pacific. Uh, what would that be? It'd be 6 a.m. London, and it would be uh, mid-afternoon down under New Zealand and Australia. So be looking for us next Saturday. We're going to be showing the world how only the light can raise hell. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome, my friend, Luke Elijah. Come. Uh, hey. Second time back on Soul Speaks 5D. Thank you for honors with your with your presence and sharing space with us. Yes, today is a new moon. New moon. And new I understand it's a, a very moon. powerful one. Do you know much about it? Can you tell us what, what's involved with it? Right. Okay. Uh, this new moon uh, leads into um, the, uh, it's a part of a child moon cycle. Where, right. Time doesn't exist. So time is measured in cycles. Yeah. I was doing a live reading uh, just on Saturday and I pulled out two cards that says new ideas and new beginnings. All right. And, and one card that I put out on the Sunday reading that says uh, completion ending. So again, we're ending cycles. So because it's measuring cycles, so cyclical time, so cyclical endings and new beginnings, right? New moon leads to new beginnings yeah, yeah. that then, uh, brings about uh, better for it's like a reset button, restart button. I would like to share a few things related to this question. Last night, I had two dreams of an acquaintance that I have not uh, contacted for about three or four years because he moved back from Singapore. He moved back to the UK, and he he came to my he came to me in my dreams twice yesterday, and his message was, "A new change is coming." Yeah. And I found it funny that he said that because again, I, and I thought maybe it's a manifestation of all those cuts in the readings, the live readings that I was doing over the weekend. And I saw, I, I checked on social media to see what he's been up to. And alas, I found out only then, just this morning, that he passed away in July last year. And I didn't even know because I lost touch with him. Wow. All right. 
And, and yeah, so he, his spirit came to visit me to tell me, okay, you know, great, great change is rapidly coming. And I, I'm seeing that. All right, so on, on the 5th uh, of June is uh, Hari Raya, which is the ending of the Ramadan fasting for the Muslim people. And on the 5th of June is also the opening of the new X-Men movies called Dark Phoenix. And I think this is very prophetic because if you look at the words mm. X-Men, X, X means the past, right? Yeah. Masculine energy, men, X of the men, they're cancelling it. The masculine patriarchal systems and energies have been uh, infiltrating uh, the status quo and maintaining control for millennia and overpowering and suppressing and repressing the, the divine feminine. So what's happening is when you see what dark phoenix is, phoenix rising, right? The sacred feminine, right? has to die a death and in that in that death they go through a, a process called the dark night of the soul they are so they have been the women the women and the feminine energies has been so badly uh, isolated repressed suppressed uh, violated upon so they are reaching a point that's it enough is enough but before they can reach that point they have to hit a downward spiral like rock sink, sink to rock bottom and that's when they go enough is enough Right, yeah. so the feminine rises up, and so the, the mass balance of masculine and feminine energies recalibrates and rebalances itself to equilibrium. Otherwise, it's too much masculine energy. This way, too much violence, too much control uh, in in our society and as, as a species right now on this planet. It's not sustainable. So the feminine energies of nurturing, of motherhood, of creativity, and creative expression, artistic expression, of unconditional love, and all the patience and birth, all this. Uh, gentle virtues is coming back to take over that power so there's more balance so to speak yeah. and, and so that so what's happening with uh, I think it's very prophetic that uh, with this new moon launches more divine feminines into their dark nights so there's a dark phoenix and so then by going through because nobody volunteers to do this work honestly you're not aware you're not conscious they don't know how so the growth is very slow so this whole momentum of pushing you to uh, do your, your, your self-healing work, your self-development work. It's like whipping the horse. It's painful, but it's quick, rapid, and accelerated, and intense. That's why many sacred feminists and many people are awakening, awakening that has nothing to do with your gender or sexuality because we all yes. have feminine and masculine energies in us. So it awakens the divine feminine in us to, to, overcompen to compensate the uh, over-masculine energies that's on this planet right now. So the dark phoenix, the dark night of the soul, the phoenix is rising and, and X with the men, all right? Clearing yeah. that masculine energies. That's what's happening on this planet. And, and I think with it uh, opening, with this movie opening a few of June is the start. It's telling that more people are going to enter that phase, and not just the healers and the shamans who had to do it first. Right, right. But, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Enough is enough. Yeah. I, I, enough. I, I feel yes. that I, I had someone on the other day who was very connected and I can't remember who it is, but very connected. It was a, it was a female. Mm -hmm. And I said, can you tell us what the intel is? What the hell's going on? And she said, people have had enough, enough. They've just, they're done, you know? And, uh, and that's it. And I find that interesting too, because if we look at the global stage and the more recent develop, developments in the geopolitical, of course, we have a very masculine, U.S. president, regardless of what your opinions are or anything, it's there. We have to honor that. Uh, and, and, it, and there does seem to be a rise in feminine figures, like the prime minister of New Zealand. Uh, I think also is it Brazil. Uh, there's another South American country that they're beginning to rise. And, and I think that, of course, everything happens in the energetics first and then begins to play out on the linear scale. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. It really is. And I think you make a really good point, whether we're talking about the U.S. president or Todd or Luke or Morgan or whoever it may be, the masculine giving up that false power and therefore the feminine rising that in the, as the phoenix is in every one of us, each and every one of us. Yeah. And we, we have to die. The ego has to die a death first, all right? You have to burn away and purge and release and clear everything that no longer serves us, that's holding us back, the programmings, the uh, limitations, the sabotaging beliefs, you know, that has been all indoctrinated in us by our, our society and by subliminal messages 
in our TV programming. Uh, actually, thank God that <laughs> Game of Thrones is finally over. So many people are addicted to watching that and I'm sure they had some subliminal messages in it. So it's such a violent, dark, gloomy show as well. Yeah. It does have some uh, interesting... I think people are addicted to watching that show because uh, it's always the bad guys winning and they, they feel like, oh no, when's the good guys going to win? And right. Also, the fact that it touches on a lot of uh, topics like homosexuality, incest, and like in, that in real life, no one wants to talk about it. So it, it brings to light some of this. So he has his good beats, but, major, but mainly I felt like people were so uh, numb to working on themselves because it is, even, it, it, even myself in the past, I was addicted to watching television, you know, and, and that had been cleared and pushed out. And, and I was like, watching Star Park and Family Guy. It was just my way of numbing myself from doing yes. the inner thing. That's why I seen people don't volunteer to do it. That's why the Dark Knight of the Soul has to happen. That's why they had to meet their twin flames, their twin flame card, but to mirror to them all the unhealed aspects, the childhood wounds, the trauma, the, the lack of self-love, the lack of self-respect, the lack of boundaries, all right? And I think we should talk about, uh, discuss this thing about setting healthy boundaries without walls. Boundaries without walls is very uh, important because People think that, okay, when they have so many, oh, too much boundaries becomes walls that separates them and then separation yeah. consciousness again. Then it, it closes them off, their heart off, uh, from giving and receiving love. Yes. So what healthy boundaries, even I'm learning, I've been reading about books and learning from the experts and putting it into practice. I'm learning it through my personal experience, how to set, how to set enough boundaries. And with certain people, the, the respect is there. The give and take, they're so giving and so loving and so nurturing. You don't even need to have boundaries to that. And this is the most ideal. We just walk to each other and we grow, we expand, we evolve so much with future respect. But with people who are less evolved, un unawakened or newly awakened, you really need to have this assertiveness with them and say, you know what? I respect and love you, my brother and my sister, but I do not accept, tolerate, and condone your toxic behaviors because a lot of people they still have addictions that they have not worked on they have unhealed childhood wounds and traumas they're unwittingly and unconsciously projecting onto you uh, and to uh, other people around them that's what's been said the best gift we can give to someone else is that of our own self-healing our own self-development yeah. then we stop projecting our shadows and other people yeah yeah. Right? yeah yeah i had that happen to me today i had a family member a very close family member uh, that I've had some of that with. There's uh, toxic frequencies coming at me, projecting on me. So I've simply do what you're saying. I spent my time working on myself mm. and I don't talk to a lot of people. So they sent me a note and they said, how come you never talk to me? And I said, I don't talk to anybody. It's, Please don't take it personal. And I put a big heart and they just wrote back and said, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> that worked. But uh, yeah, I find that if you, if for instance, if I had gone into an explanation, I, 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 I wasn't ready to do that. I, I felt like if I was going to say something, it would have been projecting somehow or perceived as projection. Like, I can't talk to you because you do this. Or however I would have said it, I just wasn't ready. So I just said, don't take it personal. I'm not really talking to anybody right now. And they said, okay. And okay is a good answer for me. You know, uh, that's a good answer. I'm, I'm all right with that. You know, uh, with strangers, it's very easy to detach from. But when it comes to our loved ones in the family, it's more challenging, right? Yes. And how I even, okay, even spiritual practitioners and healers, priests, shamans, we also are humans. And we have a human side and we have an ego to contend with. And this is what people can, up there can do. All you need to do is observe yourself, right? So who is this person having these feelings and emotions, whether negative or positive? So very frequently when someone attacks us, judges us, or projects their shadow onto us, our own shadow gets triggered. It's pushing all your buttons, especially their loved ones. You feel, you feel the anxiety, you feel like slapping them, you feel like, you know, you feel annoyed, irritated, and all these negative emotions coming up, which are very human and very normal. And all you're going to do is observe who are you in relation to these feelings? Yeah. Are you larger than this? And when you observe it from a higher third person's perspective and see yourself going through the experience, you then give rise, give thanks and release it. So you don't have to act on it. Say, hey, I'm feeling these feelings and it's okay because I'm a spirit having this human experience. Yeah. All right? It's the ego serves a function. 
there is a function for this ego, all right? But I need not, I just have to experience it without acting upon it, all right? Mm -hmm. Observing it, say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling anxious now, all right? I'm a human, I'm going to, I'm feeling impatient. So I don't have to allow it to latch on. I don't have it to intensify and grow it by lashing out onto someone else. So I observe, okay, I'm feeling impatient. I breathe into it. I center myself and then I purge it out. I let it go. That's all yeah. everything needs to do. Yeah, so we then, had, yeah. It, and yeah, you're right about that. I'm lucky because I'm in a divine relationship and I can, it, it, sometimes two is better than one. You know, I mean, sometimes like yesterday, something came in early, early in the morning. It was like frustration, anger. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't bad anger, but it was like, frustration and just intolerance and I don't know how to explain it so she was feeling it she went to the park I was feeling it I said this isn't mine I'm yeah, not saying it's, it's anyone's she wrote me back said I think this is collective and I said I, I believe it is this. So, but it didn't change the way we felt so she said I'm going to come get you so what we do is we we sit across from each other and we put our hands on each other on our hands to hand you know and we you just and we just sit there, we don't say a word, and we look at each other, and in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it goes. It's gone. gone. It dissipates. Yeah. That's spiritual alchemy. Good job. You know, you're transmuting that darkness that isn't really out. It's part of us, but it's collective yeah. as well. It's collective karma, and then we came on earth to shift. So that's one good technique you just mentioned, right? Just connecting, grounding it to the yeah. earth. What other people can do is journaling is very good. So sometimes you can take my angry email and sleep on it. And then next day, it really again rests. I don't feel that way anymore because it's been released. It's been, yeah. you know, it's been yeah. given rise. You've been acknowledging it. So uh, aesthetic dance, cathartic, you know, like Osho meditation, things, you know, dancing in a way, singing in a way. Uh, these are forms of very positive, constructive way of releasing uh, and, and purging it. Right. For me, I, I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, horseback riding, fencing, archery. So I, I, I channel all these energies and, and frequencies into more positive, constructive, yeah. healthy habits instead of addictive behaviors. So in the past, people are unawakened. When they feel the anxiety, the anxiousness, the depression, the anger, they reach out to alcohol, they reach out to sex, they're watching television, shopping, whatever is numbing. It's not yeah. this, there are better constructive ways, which we are teaching yeah. you now that you yeah. could uh, transmute these energies, you right, yeah. and transmute the darkness to light. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the message I got yesterday before I connected with Morgan. What I got was, this isn't you, uh, don't like resist it. And then I heard create, 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 create. I just heard the word, just create. So I got my, you know, I got my computer out. I started writing a song, you know, I started listening to music and started to find a way that I could transmute it, you know, I was just, and, yeah. and, and I think you can do it with someone if, and you can do it with yourself, you know, there's a yeah. question, there's a question here for you uh, that I want to bring up. Janie Hodge is my friend. She says, maybe you can help her with this. She says, I'm confused between ego being out of control and healthy self-esteem, light and dark, loving it all. But what can I do to eliminate an unhealthy ego? It's so hard to balance it. Do you have any advice for her? Well, okay, first of all, start with uh, accepting and embracing that the ego serves the function and forgive yourself first, all right? Don't think it's so hard, right? Uh, you are having a human experience. Even Jesus, Buddha, the Dalai Lama, you know, uh, Ama, the hugging saint, all of these people were human beings. They experienced, even just like Todd and myself, they experienced frustration, anger, impatience, all the negative things we experience just because if you never experience the negative, you cannot experience the positive either. You cannot cherry pick, they come together. There but you what are. you can do is when, like what we mentioned, we were just talking about, the moment you observe that, hey, I'm human, I have an experience, it's okay. Jesus Christ uh, wasn't perfect too. We're perfectly imperfect. He had all these things. You start to understand, okay, I, I, I'm not resisting the ego anymore. I'm not resisting the darkness. I'm not shaming the darkness. The darkness serves a divine function, a dichotomy. It's there is polar, polarized reality that we live in. It, so the moment you acknowledge it, it dissipates, it transmutes. Yeah. Right. If you say, no, I don't want to, I just want to numb it and run away from it, 
then it, it, it chases you through hell and back. So yeah. the first thing you do is fine, I'm human. I'm once in a while, I'm going to have this feel angry. It's normal. Even healers, shamans, priests, not perfect people. They have, they're going to have, to, they're going to be like this, right? And it's totally perfectly okay. It's understand that it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with the system. The perfect creator created it such. It's just a, a dichotomy, a, function, a divine dichotomy. And, and, and there's, don't fight that system because yeah. this system is made to serve us. Yeah. So once you, once you understand that, the charge is released. You just flow with it. And then just observe. Okay, negative. Does it make you feel good? No, it doesn't make me feel good. I release it. I change it, right? But only until I experience those negativities can I appreciate the, the good times, the positive emotions. So yeah, give rise to it. Acknowledge it. Feel it. Really feel it. Then you can release and heal it. That aspect of yourself that has been mirrored or triggered. Yeah, that's a big that's a big deal for me. That was a big deal for me, my journey for eight years. And then about six or eight months ago. I started to sit with these feelings, right? I started to sit with them. If I got angry, I just went in my room, I sat down in a chair and I said, okay, I'm angry, you know? And, and that was the first time I ever done that. I'm sad, I'm angry, uh, whatever the case was. It was the first time. All the other times I tried to do something, but I really didn't allow it to come in. I just Correct. said, no, I'm not angry or I projected on somebody, or I, or I went and did something else to avoid it and deny it. And like you said, the first thing is, somebody just put a comment up too. We, we're, we're not, we don't have to be so hard on ourselves anymore. We can accept that, all of us, you know, and, uh, and it does go away. There's something about saying it or admitting it, even if you're with someone or not, there's something about putting it out on the table with the universe that releases it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So expanding on that vulnerability is strength to accept our human side is, is power, right? Yeah. So in the past, that's what we expanding on this topic is toxic positivity. Let me explain. A lot of uh, light workers and healers, especially when you're newly awakened, they think it's all about butterflies, rainbows, love and light, angelic figures, all right? So they only do what is called light work, but not the shadow work. They shame their shadow. They say, no, nope, I'm going to reject everything that's negative and bad. And again, it's a yin and yang thing, right? You cannot yeah. have one without the other. Every time you shine a light, there's a shadow. The shadow is going to follow you. It's always, always be a part of you. Always. Yeah. So, but what's happening now is so much shadow in humanity for the past millennia. So now we're rebalancing that, that part with more light coming in. So, but before that can happen, again, it's like, uh, whenever we feel this way, we cannot we cannot uh, shame it, we cannot say we don't want to deal with it. And then when you come, you see, that's what healers, shamans, teachers, the true ones have to go through a lot of darkness. It's the masters of darkness. They must go through a lot of un indescribable pain, their own darkness of soul and reawaken and reawaken over and over and over so that they have the compassion, the empathy, the patience, the wherewithal, the resources, and the know-how, the knowledge to help other people. That's, that's why people like Mother Teresa, and he, uh, they went through a lot of suffering themselves. That's why they opened up. They said, you know what? I suffered myself so much. So I want to have that, be able to help other people. If you, if you haven't gone through it, you're, it's like blinding in the blind. You cannot help someone else. That's why the, 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 the people that I know who are shamans, they went, they went through so much hell in their life. Yeah. And they have reason from that hell, like, like a, a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah. And I say, I try and follow me. I know how to. I know how to help you because exactly. I I went through cancer. I went through uh, divorce. I went through all the afflictions, the human afflictions that you have gone through. So I can assist you. Right. That's why uh, if you are going through a lot of issues, problems, and challenges in your life, whether it's illness or whether it's uh, like say coming out as homosexual or whatever the affliction you're going through, bravely accept that challenge. You, you sign up to do this. You sign up to transmute it. You sign up to help and assist humanity right now to ascend and to purge out all that. And it's all, it's all rapidly changing very quickly, I guarantee you, because people that I thought were never awakened, all right, are now awakening and become psychics and healers and teachers yeah. themselves. I'm like shocked because, and some of it, people having a lot of walking experience, meaning that overnight, they uh, uh, more advanced soul takes over their body and they suddenly 
be shift, it be, it's like a different person altogether. Walk-ins, walk, this walk-in phenomena is, is increasing. See, so, and even the people who don't have walk-ins, all right, they, they enter the dark night so so and rapidly, it's like weeping the horse, like I said. They, they didn't volunteer to do their healing work. They're not even conscious they need to do it and don't know how. So, because it's not taught in school, so the, the dark night and the soul experience puts them in a position to finally face and confront all yes. the unhealthy health. And yeah. that's why humanity, when they work on themselves, when they foster work on themselves, humanity rises very rapidly. Yeah, it's and I happened. think that, that's important to remember too. That's important to remember when we are going through things like that. I've got a dear friend right now mm. who lost a very, very, really the closest person to them a year ago and went through a whole year of, of, of really processing all that and really speaking openly about it. And then just today found out that a person who's very dear to her transitioned yeah. yes, yesterday. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, wow. To go through that in the last 12 months in these energies, wow, what a magnificent soul. That soul has signed up to go through this, what we look at as a dark, dark period, these dark things that have occurred, but that soul chose that to bring something out on the other side because it's a very giving soul. They are a very giving soul. They will share everything. And so I think we got to remember that sometimes. Uh, This gentleman I had on earlier today, uh, Patrick McCormick, who channels uh, in Carton, I think is the name of the multidimensional group of beings, uh, talked in regard to to that, talked in regard to, uh, you know, really, I guess, in essence, just how how incredible and influential on the universe that each one of us are. And Precisely. We, yes, we, yeah, that we gross, we grossly, vastly underestimate our our power and, yes. and, and the energetic things that we actually do that may look like something very simple on the surface, but in fact they have powerful uh, repercussions through all dimensions and all timelines. Yeah. Yes, we actually basically advanced souls, uh, all souls that sign up where angels fear to tread. We are, Earth is like extreme spots for the spirit world. The spirit world actually applauds us. Oh my God, I don't, they're observing us, the spirit, the non-physically incarnate. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe these people are, have chosen so much density, so much darkness, and still able to transmute it into light, right? Yeah, yeah masterful souls always have forgotten our power and light, and it's deliberate to forget and then reawaken to that memory. That's why, uh, like, Bashar, who's channeled by Dara Anka, I see, Earth is a masterclass, all right? And, you know, this is, uh, it's not, it's not a sim- it's one of the darkest, densest place on, in this universe. Not the most dense, but one of the, uh, you know, most challenging place that you can go to, really extreme spot. So if you come incarnate here and incarnate with so many afflictions, impairments and handicaps, right? You're, you're powerful advanced soul and you've forgotten that. And so it is our job to remind each other as co-creators and take each other on, encourage each other. And for people, this one, a lot of people have been transitioning since uh, 2012. If they transition back to the non-physical, their job is done. They are, all right? If you're still here, you're meant to partake, assist, witness, and co-create in this ascension process for the planet. You sign up. Every single one on Earth, you sign up for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And on this day, uh, our good friend, uh, Romeo Barron, uh, who also loves the tapestry behind you. He says it's his favorite oh. colors. But he was saying this is a great portal day. It's the third day. It's the sixth month, 2019, adds to a 12, 3, 6, 9, 12. Uh, and this is also the new moon. Now, my understanding is, is that we will not have a new moon until we have an eclipse. There will be an eclipse, I think, uh, one or two days before the next new moon. And then there's another eclipse later on in July. So there's two in July, one solar, one lunar. I don't know a lot about this stuff. Do you have any any yes. uh, forecast on what sure. that represents? In fact, indeed, I actually, in fact, I do. Let yeah. me show you. All right, a typical average year has four eclipses. Last year had five, this year has five. And next year in 2020, a whopping six eclipses, okay? 
And I never used to be uh, sensitive to lunar energies uh, that much, even though I'm born in the sign of Cancer, which is ruled by the moon. I couldn't really feel full moons, new moons, or eclipses that much until the uh, total solar eclipse of August 2017, which was in Oregon, which lots of parts of North America, travel through North America, could see it. And I was teaching uh, classes and workshops at the Oregon Eclipse Festival, five and a half hours drive outside of Portland, Oregon. And it, it was attended by 50,000 people. So at the totality, 100% totality of the eclipse was sublime, people crying, they were singing and chanting. And I sent a very emphatic prayer to the universe. I said, universe, I sincerely want to be of a, in a better space uh, to serve humanity in a bigger way. Please give me upgrades and downloads and activations for, for such a purpose. And suddenly I felt my heart chakra open. And I, oh my goodness, what is that? And then that was the start of spiraling me into my dark night of the soul. Yeah. And I thought at the time I'm awakened already, but wow. You know, <laughs> finally I'm vulnerable and all the things I was like afraid to look at or, or didn't. At first, at, at, up to that point, uh, I was pretty much, uh, even though I had, uh, done like uh, plant medicines, I thought that, uh, you know, I've, I thought that I dealt with a lot of suppressed shit, all right? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Look at the thunder, right? I right. heard it, man, whoa. So there was so much junk in me from all my self-loading and uh, darkness in me. And, and again, I had to transcend and transmute that. Otherwise, I'm projecting it unwittingly, unconsciously. Otherwise, I don't have the, comp the compassion and the self-love, the unconditional, I had to earn. The, and so the dark now the soul was one of the best things that ever happened to me, you know, on hindsight. Of course, when I was going through it, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, yeah, you know, no. I, was like I thought I'd never see the light again. And it was really intense. Uh, so what this eclipse is doing is each time an uh, eclipse happens, uh, or uh, an energy portal happens, like 8, 8, 12, 12, 11, 11, a new wave of people get awakened. It's a start oh. for them. Because if we all simultaneously awaken at the same time or reawaken, the matrix of illusion will collapse because all of us are in the, in the, yeah. the darkness, imagine all of us in the dark night together. Society will collapse. There's no one to go to work because everyone will be incapacitated working on themselves, right? So it has to go in phases and stages. And, and, and of course, the teachers, that once we are ready, it happens to you. Right? So if you're on the path of ascension, the path of evolution is inevitable because we all sign up to evolve together and transition together. At some point, you will have to go through this in some form or another, and possibly multiple times as well until it's all cleared, purged out, so that there can be heaven on earth in, on this planet with peace and joy and abundance for all. Yes. Before that can happen, all this, so it seems that all the darkness is happening right now. You have Trump, you have you know, the trade war and uh, the trade war and the, uh, speaking of that, I'll expand about Huawei and uh, 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 that Huawei ban. I want to, because I did a reading on it on Saturday. Yeah. I thought it was finding. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. And so this upcoming eclipse, uh, you know, typically we have uh, always, a, a eclipse always in July and August. Yeah. I'm for it to come. Uh, so what's going to do is, un is unleash another wave, and thank God for that. So yeah. So no, it one should... does, no one does the work. Humanity is stuck stuck where it is. It can't. It can't be this way. It has to change. It has to shift. Yeah. And and it has been shifting. It's already here. Already now. It's accelerating very rapidly. More people are meeting their twin flames. More people are entering their dark night of the soul. More people are awakening rapidly. Uh, and thank God. Thank God. Yeah. So that may so it sounds like July should be a big big month. It's got two eclipses. Uh, the one starts right before the new moon, and then I got to think energetically. Even though it's just one country, and I'm I'm not I have no allegiance to any country. I just want to make that clear. That July fourth seems to be a big day. It's called Independence Day. Not that it really you know history really means anything, but there's something about energetics, and to have the two eclipses. And, and as you're explaining it, more people will be awakened. More people will, you know, uh, start their process. So that, that's actually really great news and a great way to kick off the second half of 
what I think is is a, an incredible year so far already. Yeah, that's why this new moon of, of in the sign of Gemini is the first half marker, the first half of the year is gone, it's a cycle, right? So starts of a second cycle of the second half of the year. And again, this is sign of Gemini, the twins, uh, again, 11, 11, 1, 1, the sun, right? So 11, 11 is the spiritual awakening, code, ding, 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 wakey, wakey. And there's also the sign of twin flames, your mirrored manifestation. So yeah, it, thank God for twin flames so that they're, they're here to anchor, they anchor the light so well. You're forced to work on yourself when you meet your twin. Right, yeah. and that's when you ascend very rapidly, very yeah. rapidly. How about that? Uh, how about that full moon in Gemini? I don't even know this stuff. And uh, what oh, was it? The eighteenth, eighteenth of last month. And uh, oh my God, the extremes that played out. <laughs> oh my God, that was insane, man. For like yeah, yeah. the seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, twenty, twenty-one. Everybody's like, "What the hell's going on?" You know, yeah, stuff was, yeah. stuff was See, popping yeah, exactly. up that hadn't been up for years, right? Exactly, but you know, it's uh, dragging out a lot of uh, karmic contracts and patterns and dysfunctional uh, behaviors, toxic behaviors to the forefront so that we can look at it and say, nope, it doesn't serve us anymore. Not yeah. that it was wrong or bad. See, yeah. this, this is where, this is where we, we come back to the earlier questions of people. We must stop judging something as bad or wrong. We stop shaming the shadow. Yes. We, so, so it's just what it is. All right, it's just a polarity, it's hot and cold better. It depends, it's subjective, you see? So it's the same spectrum. Yeah. We are just deciding, hey, we have shifted, we have evolved. So it no longer serves us. We are, we are, it's like a caterpillar morphing to a stage, meaning all the four stages. Not one is better than the others. Of course, you want to metamorphosize. That's right, more. that's right. But that stage can only happen with the cocoon stage of total darkness, and then you break free through the light. And, yeah. if this, and also it's important to note that if, if that cocoon or egg is broken from an external force, the life inside dies. But yeah. if it's broken from within, life me begins. Yeah. So that's why we have to honor the journeys of our loved ones and, and our people. We got to let them be. It's divine timing. God created or source or, or the creator created everything. Only he can uncreate. So yeah. it's not up to us, our ego, to, to dictate. The, 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 this, the evolutionary path of someone, we got to allow them uh, their path and thereby we learn patience and compassion and forgiveness to those who are still in their recycling their toxic cycles. But understand that that will change and that has to change because this whole planet is shifting whether you want it or like it or not because we signed up for it. That's you right. See? Yeah, and yeah. I think and, and I think it is part of the expansion is that we can now look at these things that we did even in our own lives, you know, and we judged ourselves, you know, like I, I, I did that, been there, done that. I want nothing to do with that. I'm not that anymore, whatever. But they, those things served us. And I think we're getting to a point now where we can actually look at different frequencies, such as a yogi guru that's kind of faded away. But it served us. It helped us. It assisted us. It was part of our journey. And yeah. uh, and we can we can we can uh, release that we don't right. we don't we don't have to keep that differentiation differentiation going the separation right. going. Uh, Correct. It, exactly. Yeah. It was necessary up to a point and say okay we observe it and we just look it doesn't work anymore it doesn't serve us anymore we want something better grander higher but without shaming and say thank you for the lessons I'm now ready to move on to the grade two grade three grade four higher higher. Yeah. Yeah. Up infinite upward expansion yeah. and we spoke about this in our the, the last time we yeah. in our last session yeah. well, every time you think you're enlightened or, or, or awakened your ceiling is the floor or the next level it's yeah, next yeah, that's right <laughs> you just shine more more light shines yeah. more shines what's left of the dark and the other thing that's been coming in that's been coming in to me on a personal level and of course to morgan and i uh but also in the people i'm talking to there's this, there's this energy or air of celebration of a gathering, of a great gathering. I had a, a, a little occurrence about a week ago outside with a, a nature being, but the nature being told me, I said, well, who are you? And it said, I'm a nature being, but I'm not from this planet. I'm from off planet. And I said, yeah. oh, well, what are you doing here? And they said, we are here for the great gathering. You know, we are here for humanity's great gathering. And so then the next day, I heard a couple of other people say, 
you know, they got a channel, they got a transmission about this is becoming a great gathering that certain certain veils or certain uh, certain energetic doorways have been open, allowing in more and more universal energy to whatever we're whatever we're building up to, which seems to be something that's very near. Does that resonate with you? Totally. Let me explain further. All right. Your viewers are pretty uh, advanced uh, in all things spiritual and esoteric. So I'm sure they've heard of stuff like uh, Agatha, which is the inner earth, yes. and yes. Master Command, and uh, Atlantis, Lemuria. What's happening right now is the veils are getting very thin between dimensions and parallel realities and universes. So all the timelines are all converging and collapsing onto itself. So when you talk about something like Agatha, the, the inner earth, it's not actually physical in our third dimension. It's on a different dimensional frequency and reality. It exists, everything exists, judge nothing. Every time I judge something, I'm eating humble pie, and like, oh my God, it exists. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, right. So it does exist. So does, so does Ashna Command, all right, that uh, all the yeah. starships, there's lots of starships from different uh, uh, extraterrestrial races. By, by the way, we are extraterrestrials to other people as well, right? So. What's happening is they're all connecting at all, like what's it gathering to see, uh, especially from those that are non-physical watching us, see how we are transmuting this darkness into light. They are very excited to watch it. Yes. And yeah. times we volunteer for this to partake, assist and witness this great shift because it's, it's, uh, in this timeline, at least it's never been done before. So they are watching us, wow, look at you guys, you dare to incarnate with so many limitations and darkness and yet, can see yourself back to the light. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, oh, let me, uh, you know, myself in my lifetime, I've seen six UFOs now. And my first one was with my brother, who is uh, kind of, currently he's still unawakened, but he, he was the one who spotted it. We were in Tokyo. And back then we had film cameras. So I had to wind the film. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, met, I met many light workers and practitioners and even non-awakened folks who are also starting to see all these phenomena and recording it with their mobile devices, right? More and more yeah. people, you know, the starships are lowering the vibration, allowing you being in the frequency to allow us to view them. And so next, next is the disclosure, the, the organic disclosure for extraterrestrial life. And let me expand further, like, like okay, how many grains of sand do you think there are on planet Earth, Todd? There's got to be a trillion, trillion. I don't know. It's got to right. be. Yeah. All right. Did you know there are more stars in our observable universe than grains of sand here on the planet Earth? And half, 50% of these stars have revolving planets around, around them. Yeah. People have forgotten that our sun is just a very small, ordinary star. Our sun has a name. It's called Sol, S-O-L. That's Casa del Sol, solar system, all right? And, and we, in our, our Hubble telescope, which is one of our most powerful telescopes, uh, we saw that the Hubble telescope photographed that uh, there was, at last count, 500 uh, billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone. And yeah. as you know, the sun is just on the spiral, outer spiral arm of this Milky Way, we are like the suburbia of Milky Way. Yeah. As many galaxies in our observable universe as there are stars in this one Milky Way galaxy. When I say observable universe, what I'm trying to say is that this universe, this particular universe we're in is very young. It's expanding and growing and light hasn't traveled beyond certain parts. So our, our instruments can only record up to the event horizon. We cannot see what's way past the event horizon because light hasn't traveled there yet. But just because light hasn't traveled there doesn't mean there's nothing there. There's at least dark matter at the very least. All right? And as you know, empty, what you call it, space, not empty space, right? It's, it's, it's actually filled with stuff. It's all, and the, the gap between uh, 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 objects, right? It's actually 99% like uh, gash, gaseous, gaseous or, or, or the only solid element is less than 1%, yeah. right? Yeah. Less than 1%. So you can condense all the solid yeah. stuff in the, in the universe is actually less than a, a fingernail. So little, but... but, yeah. but it, it, like it, an it, atom. Hmm? Like, a, like an atom. Correct, Maybe exactly. An atom. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it looks like space, but it's actually ether that's connecting or dark matter that's connecting yeah. it all energetically. 
So, so if you fathom that, wow, you know, even uh, the Drake's equation, uh, uh, he, he stipulated, the scientist called uh, Drake, I can't remember his first name. Uh, he, state, he stated through his equation that just in our Milky Way alone, there must be 10,000 Earth-like planets. That's provided that these extraterrestrial lifetimes are carbon-based like mm -hmm. us and, and require the same elements to thrive and live. You see that Earth is very young in this evolution. There are many planets and systems out there. There are billions of years of evolution in this linear time scale ahead of us. So we, we there to, to be the only intelligent life in, in yeah. the universe is mathematically impossible. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, yes. I mean, even, even on this planet, in this realm, we're just now starting to understand all of the life forms that are here. And I'm not just talking about physical, but- uh, Precisely. There's... Precisely. We haven't even charted uh, fully the, the ocean floors and we're still discovering new species of plants or flora and fauna, or animals, insects especially, every single day on this planet. Earth is like a living library for different, uh, our ancestors who were extraterrestrial, they seeded their, their DNA like, and codes uh, in, into this planet. So it's a bio biological library for different, uh, species, uh, different species of or extraterrestrials. That's why they like to come visit here as well to, to yeah. see what we're up to. Yeah, yeah this, uh, this uh, multi-dimensional being that was channeling on the previous show said that uh, it was a very funny, uh, I can't remember the, the name, but Patrick McCormick is the gentleman uh, who channels this uh, multi-dimensional being and has since 1994. It's very interesting, a lot like Bashar, a lot like that type of channel, but a very funny, a very funny personality and said to us on the show, that the earth is considered the greatest show, the greatest reality show in the universe. <laughs> and really- so, the, the, like, Similar yeah. to what Dol Dolores Canyon, well, what she uh, recorded in her many of her books, the late Dolores Canyon, bless her soul, yes. uh, which departed from us. And she, through hypnotherapy, she regressed uh, a lot of uh, clients and this all the yeah. information that she uh, gathered, it's a ways of awakening. That's what, which, what ties to what I said earlier that we can't all awaken at the same time, otherwise the yeah. structure will collapse. So yeah. it's all like different stages, some are first waivers, first generation, second, third, fourth, you know, so the indigo and rainbow children, the rainbow warriors will take over what we are paving the way for. Yeah. Uh, right? We are seeding, we are seeding the, the, the new golden age. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And not just for this realm, but it's a universal, it's a universal occurrence. Universal it's, thing, exactly. Yeah. Second. Now, now, now you, uh, we talked about this last time. I just want to reiterate for anyone who didn't catch the last show you were on here. Um, so you, do, you, you are a healer. You do yeah. energy. You're an energy worker. Uh, you're many things. And, and you, we can, you can check the bio if you'd like. You also do, do you do work online with people one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, uh, I do. Most of my clients are actually from overseas. So I do a lot of Skype sessions. When, uh, wherever I am right now, I'm in Singapore, uh, but I travel a lot, but lately I've been in Singapore because I just moved centers and I was like making sure that the, everything is set in place. And while I'm in Singapore, I host a lot of visiting practitioners as well. So if you're a visiting pra practitioner who travels around the world and is keen to uh, do your service or teach in Singapore, do reach out to me, where you can find me on my Facebook page, uh, Luke Elijah, just search Luke Elijah Spirit and you'll find me. So my, my center, Heaven on Earth, uh, we are doing running workshops and classes on Tai Chi, Qigong, aromatherapy, uh, he, acupuncture, you name it, Reiki, you name it, it's there, crystal healing. So what, what I do uh, is, I, I, because now we have the, the advent of technology, we don't need to be physically in the same environment and energy transcends time and space. So, Yes, I, I do do private sessions over Skype and also do uh, video interviews like with you. And I also do my uh, monthly live readings. I also post recorded readings onto my YouTube channel where I interview lots of spiritual practitioners, healers, and people with inspiring breakthrough stories to share. So yeah. if you want to find me on my YouTube, it's Luke Elijah on YouTube. You see lots of videos. I do readings. 
I do interviews with fellow practitioners on all kinds of topics from twin flames to shadow work to whatever that person is an expert in. Yeah. I'd like to give a shout out to a, a spiritual worker that you often interview that has helped me a lot, especially in my journey when I was newly awakened, especially in my twin flame journey, Magenta Pixie. Yes. She's yes. awesome. She is awesome and she's actually yeah. going to be on, uh, she's going to be on on the 19th of June uh, and that'll be around eight o'clock London time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have a, we have a very good uh, uh, synergy together and uh, I really enjoy working with her and, and, and I'd also like to give a shout out to her dearly beloved. They just got married uh, about six weeks ago. Wow. Dan Congratulations. Daniel. Yeah, Daniel does uh, all of her scheduling. He's the, he's that one, you know, in the background that, uh, you know, that is her polarity. He does all the video work for her and stuff like that. But a very, wow. very, very phenomenal person. Uh, I actually asked them both to come on. <laughs> you know, but, speaking of, earlier, earlier Todd, this reminds me, earlier, very early on in this session, I had a download to ask you to have Morgan join you for future sessions. This yeah. Is the three of us. Yeah, I will. I Isn't will tell. Else? I will tell her that she's she's asked to a lot. She's a lot like Daniel is to Magenta. She does not yeah. like being in front of the camera, but when she is, we have great conversations. And I will tell her that next time we do this, uh, she's going to have to be on with you. Yeah, okay. it's a triad, the Trinity, yeah. Father, Son, Holy yeah. Ghost. You know, and complete yeah. that. And this is, um, yeah, this. This is it's very powerful, you know. Uh, this is a this is a numerological tree year, two zero right. one nine, right? That's right. When that's right. Numbers is a tree, so that's why yeah. you need a triad, right? yeah. a tricotomy. And we so, are we've been experiencing that. We uh, when I met her, she, of course she'd been downloading stuff for twenty years, and mm. uh, like many like many uh, that we've interviewed, especially women uh, who were just doing it, you know, in solitude for many many years. Uh, but she told me uh, we are going from duality to the Trinity and all these things. She, she basically told me when I met her, they've all kind of come true. Now we formed our own triad. And then we, when we are with someone else, we see the power of the triad. It's yeah. very, 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 very powerful. And, uh, yeah. and, and we're not the only ones, obviously there's more and more people it's occurring to awesome. that's the new math of the five D. But uh, yeah, I'm going to tell her that I'm going to tell her to get in touch with you. And I'm going to tell her that the only stipulation is she has to be on camera with us this time. So, yeah. so we can, we can uh, explore that, uh, the power of the three, six, nine there. But uh, yeah. And yes. I want to, I want to thank you again. I want to thank the thunder gods for the thunder boom. <laughs> that was, there are no coincidences uh, and everybody out there on the live and on the replay, uh, please visit uh, Luke Elijah's YouTube. If you, if it resonates, reach out to him. Let's support each other in this year of collaboration and co-creation, sovereignty and expansion. Support our brothers and sisters in an equal energy exchange. This is the new 5D commerce. This is a real vocation now. Energy healers are, are just like lawyers, accountants, doctors. We are, we are the new vocation. And I say we as in all of you out there because everybody, everybody has that capacity. So please support uh, Luke Elijah and we will get in touch with him to collaborate again with Morgan. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, so, so this way she can't get mad at me. I'm gonna say, he said, you have gotta do this. So, so we'll do it. You take care, brother. Thank you thank so much. You, thank you. Thank you to all of you watching the recording and live. Really appreciate all of you, every single one. All right, thank you, brother. I'll see you. Bye.